Remember that before you listen to this uh, lecture, I really highly recommend that you go on Khan Academy and you watch the assigned video. Um, don't really pay attention when he starts talking about like the physics behind it, but the idea is that I want you guys to see how parametric equations can help us view information and view um, the graph a little bit differently and how it actually works. So it's 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 just a short video. It's not very long, um, but he you know it's a nice little visual exp explanation as to why parametrics are useful and how they can help us in the real world. Um, so we're going to be doing five point eight a and it's just part one um, of parametric equations for circles. And so we'll talk about what parametric equations are um, and then how they pertain to circles. So. In the video, Khan explains that a parametric equation um, is an equation for x and y that uses a different parameter, a different variable. It's, it's de x and y is dependent on something else. Um, so in the video, that something else is time, and it can really be any parameter um, that you know that x and y can be dependent on. But um, let's actually get to the nitty gritty of things. So our objective here is that you will be able to understand the relationships between parametric equations of circles and write both rectangular and parametric equations for circles by completing problems as I teach you. So this PowerPoint goes directly with the PDF notes that I posted for you. Um, so hopefully you either copy that down or printed it out if you have the resource. Um, if not, then just copy it down on a sheet of paper and take notes from there. Highly recommend that. Um, so let's get started. So definitions that we need. Okay. Um, par a parameter. A parameter is a variable that depends on or determines other variables. So as uh, the Khan Academy video explains, you can find x and y based on another variable. So that's that variable that they're based on is your parameter. So a parametric equation, an example, is um, if we can define uh, x as 5 square root of 2 times t, and then y as negative 10 t squared plus 5 square root of 2 times t. So if you'll notice here in both the x and y equations, our variable that both of them are dependent on is t. So that would be our parameter. T would be our parameter for these two parametric equations. And if we know T, then we can identify the X and the Y coordinates that would go with them. Now, what we're, we've normally been used to and what we've normally used is something called rectangular form. Rectangular form is our basic X and Y. We just use our X and Y. Now we're gonna be dealing with circles today. So it's important for us to know the um, equation of a circle, okay, and in terms of x and y or regular x, y coordinates, and the equation of our circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and if you guess that r is our radius, then you are correct. So x squared plus y squared is equal to our radius squared. That is the basic equation or function of a circle on an XY grid. Um, now, we're going to be able to take this information and rewrite it in parametric equations. So pay attention in the next slide as to the bit of information that you need. Um, so definitions of parametric equations for circles. Now, simple parametric equations, okay? A simple parametric equation is when the center of your circle, the center of X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. Your center here is zero, zero. So it's at the origin. Okay, so this circle is centered at the origin. And R is our radius, not R squared, but R, okay? So from here, if we wanted to find the X and Y coordinates using parametric equations, we bring in our unit circle here, okay? So in order to find uh, the parametric equation or the x in terms of parametric equations, our x is simply equal to r, the radius, times cosine of t, 
and y is equal to r times sine t. Now notice here in our unit circle, right, or in our circle centered at the origin, t is representative of our angle, um, and we have our x and y here. I hope that you made the connection to the unit circle as to why x uses cosine and y uses sine. And if you didn't, let me help you out. So if you remember in our unit circle, our x and y coordinates were indica indicative of our cosine comma sine. So our unit circle, it was always cosine comma sine. So cosine always connected to our x coordinate, sine always connected to our y coordinate. So our basic, basic centered at the origin circle has parametric equations of x is equal to r cosine of t, y is equal to r sine of t, okay? Now from this equation, hopefully you're, you're gonna be able to identify your radius and be able to write your, um, your parametric equations, okay? Of course, not every circle is centered at the origin. So we have to always consider the fact that we might have a transformed circle where the center of our circle is h comma k. I really hope that these ring a bell for you for transformations, okay? H always has to do with our horizontal transformation to the right or to the left. K always has to do with our vertical translation up or down. So if you'll notice where each one of them goes, our circle equation, our rectangular circle equation has changed slightly. We have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, where h and k are the center of the circle. And then that's equal to our radius squared. So h and k are the center of our circle. They are the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle. So they would be this point right here, h, k. Okay. How does this change the, the parametric equations that we would get? Well, um, very slightly, if you'll notice. Um, instead of just r cosine of t, now you take your h and you have h plus r cosine t. And you take your y and y is equal to k plus r sine of t. I really hope that you guys are remembering that h and k, h goes with x and k goes with y. And so hopefully you'll be able to remember these equations for yourselves. Um, but it's pretty much very basic over here. If you're given your rectangular equation of your circle, all you really need is the center of your circle, AK, identify your H and your K, and then your radius, and you should be able to write your parametric equations here. Um, also pay attention here. You see the minuses, X minus H, Y minus K. I hope that you realize that this means that whatever you see in the equation, it's going to lie to you. It's going to be a liar. And in this case, K is also lying. So you really, really, really want to pay attention to your signs here for the H and the K when you see them in the rectangular equation. So let's try an example here. <clears throat> so we have this here, okay, our X minus H squared plus y minus k squared equals our radius squared. Center is at h, k. r is our radius, okay? And of course, we can write our parametric equations for x and y. Our parameter here is t, the angle. We're just calling it t. t can represent really anything, but because we're doing cosine and sine, is definitely an angle, okay? So h and k are, we need our centers and we need our radius. So, right here in our example, if we're given a radius of 2 and the circle, excuse me, and the circle is centered at 4 comma negative 1, then we simply take this information and we plug and chug. So, we have our x coordinate and our y coordinate. I need my h and my radius for my x coordinate. My h is 4, okay? My radius is 2. Um, for my y coordinate, I need my k and my r. My k is negative 1. My r is 2. Okay. These are directly coming from the point, so I don't have to pay attention to the signs. The signs are as they are. 
you really have to pay attention if you're extracting it from the equation itself. Okay, so if I know my h, k, and r, then I simply just plug in my 4 plus 2 cosine of t, um, negative 1 plus 2 cosine of t, and those right there are my parametric equations for this circle that has a radius of 2 and is centered at 4, negative 1. Okay, let's try another example. Radius of 1 half centered at about negative 3, comma 6. Okay, again, we have our two equations. I have my r as 1 half. I have my h as negative 3, my k as 6. So I simply plug it in. My x is negative 3 plus 1 half cosine of t. My y is 6 plus 1 half sine of t. And that's it. Those are my two parametric equations for finding x and y in terms of t. Okay? Or based on the parameter of t. Let's try another example here. We have a radius of 3 centered about negative 5 and 0. Try this on your own. Pause the video, try it, um, and then play again to check your answer. So if you check your answer, you'll simply get x is equal to negative 5 plus 3 cosine of t, and y is equal to 3 sine of t. Okay. Um, how do we then take parametric equations and write rectangular equations? So remember that um, our rectangular equations uh, were the x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So you'll notice here that we have our parametric equations. And again, what's being multiplied to cosine and sine? That's our radius. So in this case, our radius is 15. Okay. And what is being added or subtracted to them, that's our h and our k. So from the x equation, we get our h for the center. From the y equation, we get our k for the center. So our center is 4, comma, negative 10. And then we take this and we plug it into our rectangular equation. h goes here, y or k goes here, and our, our radius goes here. So we get x minus 4 squared plus y plus 10 squared is equal to 15 squared. I hope you can catch why this changed to a plus. Okay, y minus a negative 10 will give you a positive 10 there. And then, of course, square that 15. You don't want to leave it as 15 squared. And there is your rectangular equation for that, uh, those given parametric equations. Let's try another example. Um, we have x is equal to 12 cosine t, y is equal to 12 sine t plus 2. We have a 12 being multiplied to both cosine and sine. That makes it our radius. Um, over here, I have nothing being added or subtracted to this. Therefore, our h is 0. Over here, I have 2 being added. So that means k is 2 from the y. So our center is at 0, 2 with a radius of 12. Plug that in, simplify, and we get x squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 144. Okay. Um, all right, and then we have graphing parametric equations, okay? We're going to graph them on a coordinate grid. So again, you want to be able to extract the center, and you want to be able to extract your radius. So x equals 3 cosine of t minus 2, y equals 3 sine of t minus 4. 3 is being multiplied to both cosine and sine. That makes it our radius. And then I have a minus 2 for h and a minus 4 for k. Again, h comes from the x equation, k comes from the y equation. So here's our center at negative 2, negative 4, and my radius is 3. So what do I do? I take my, uh, my center and I plot it. So I plot it at negative 2, negative 4. That's the center of my circle, okay? And then I take my radius and I count three spaces in to the right, up, left, and down for my radius. Because remember, the radius is from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. So three this way, three that way, three that way, three that way. And then I simply just draw the curves of my circle and you're done. You have effectively graphed your parametric equations as a circle. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, please write or